Hello, hello, good morning, and welcome to another video. So we have a lot to cover today. I have no real notes for this, though I have notes that I've taken just over time um, that the Lord has placed on my heart this morning to discuss with you. The first thing I want to say is we have been playing around. As a body of Christ, um, we have become mere churchgoers. And let me tell you, even the mere church going that we've been doing, we've been doing that all wrong. And that has just become just a game. And the dangerous part of it becoming, thank you, Holy Spirit, the dangerous part of going to church and Christianity becoming a game is that you don't see um, power. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you don't really understand the authority that you have in Jesus Christ and you don't know how to operate in the power associated with your allegiance to Jesus Christ. And therefore, most people, I always like to say, you turn to witchcraft, you turn to serving false gods. Well, there is a judgment for you doing that. But beside that, I want to address something. And that's that some of us have been bewitched. We have been deceived. And, you know, I, I understand that this is so hard for some people to understand, but the Lord gave me this last night. He said, what, what my people fail to realize is that Christianity is really, um, and we're going to use, thank you, Holy Spirit. We're going to use the court system is what we're going to use because this is the way that the Lord described it to me last night. And I'm going to share with you, um, a dream that he gave me at the end of last year that he was trying to let me know what was going on then. And I couldn't quite pick up on it. Okay. But through continued fasting and continued praying, praying, I was able to come to some of the conclusions that I'm going to share with you today. And it is my prayer that you don't use this video as an exhausted list like Tanzania knows everything because I absolutely do not know everything. Um, but you take the conversation that we're going to have here today and that you allow the Holy Spirit to expand on it for your own life. But I want to say this. Christianity is not mere church going. OK, if I never step foot in the church, that shouldn't be the deciding factor about me serving Jesus, about my relationship as it relates to the kingdom of God. So, like I said, the Lord gave me a picture of a judicial system. And I realized that a lot of people have cracked it up to just going to church, but you don't really understand the court system. This morning, when I came in here to prepare this video for you, he showed me this as well. And that's that you would not go to the courtroom. Like, let's say you have a court date scheduled. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's say you have a court date scheduled. Um, maybe you got traffic tickets, something. Who knows? Whatever. You would not go to the courthouse any kind of way. You wouldn't go to the courthouse high. You wouldn't go up there drunk. You wouldn't go up there acting like a fool. You know why? Because they would take you behind the jail. And a person who is sane knows this. OK, you know the things that you are not allowed to do when you go into the court system, like the court system that we have, like in real life. And the Lord told me that they understand this as it relates to like the life that they're living, like the one that you can see. But uh, most people, most people who profess to be Christians do not understand this about the spiritual realm. OK, and God is spirit. So what are you doing? He said they tried to come to me any kind of way. So I want to tell you that before we get into any of these things, there is a protocol. God has a protocol. There is a way that you even must approach his throne. Okay, you think about how strict our court system is like in real life. There that is very loosely based on the kingdom of God. OK, very loosely. And I say very loosely as in it's it's just what Satan has done. Just take some principles, take some things, just make he, he didn't create anything. He tried to recreate something. But just know that you're not going to come to God any old kind of way. So, like I said, before we get into any of these things, don't think you're going to be praying any of these prayers. Don't think you're going to be doing any of these things if you haven't gotten some of the precepts down down pat. And some of those precepts is the one that I have been called to talk about. And I like to mention a lot is rolling out of the bed with a man that is not your husband. Don't don't think about praying these prayers. Don't think about coming to some of these truths because you simply won't be able to understand it. And you're simply not in right standing in the same way that, like I said, if you were going to the courthouse, they will take your butt to jail. 
at this point, when we talk about the course of heaven, you're not, your case isn't even being heard with some of the behavior that you continue to go about doing. Okay. There is a way that you must approach God, that you must, lest you continue on in the sin until, um, your time is until he beckons for your spirit. Go check out that video. We're not even going to get into that here. So I want to bring first to your attention. Let's go here. We're going to go to Hosea chapter four, and we're going to start at the top at the first verse. And I'm going to read this in the amplified version because I don't want any misunderstandings. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord has a legal case with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no faithfulness, no steadfast love, no dependability or loyalty or kindness or knowledge of God from personal experience with him in the land. There is false swearing of oaths. OK, so through false religions, through just all kind of practices, all kinds. OK, uh, Freemasonry is probably at the top of the list. At the top of the list, and we're going to talk about a few things uh, here on today. Um, there is false swearing of oaths, deception, broken faith, murder, stealing, and adultery. They employ violence so that one act of bloodshed follows closely on another. Therefore, the land continually mourns. And everyone who lives in it languishes in tragic suffering together with the animals of the open country and the birds of the heavens, even the fish of the sea despair. Yet let no one find fault, nor let anyone rebuke others for your people are like those who contend with the priests. So you will stumble in the daytime and the false prophet will also stumble with you in the night. And I will destroy your mother, Israel. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And in the Amplified version, it's telling you that this lack of knowledge is the lack of knowledge of my law. Well, where I reveal my will. So not your church attendance. That is not the knowledge that we're talking about here. It's just not. We're not talking about hopping up and down on the stage. Ah, 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 and amen. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the knowledge of God. We're talking about the knowledge of Christ. People are destroyed because they lack this knowledge. They lack the knowledge that this is more than mere church going. That this is, this is a legal case. That Satan actually is presenting legal, a legal case against you because of your sin. And it's still standing, one, because there has been no repentance, two, because you don't want to acknowledge that this the real problem. You don't want to acknowledge that you're broke, your mama broke, your grandma was broke, your great grandma was broke, all of y'all living in poverty. And it's because of the same issue. Nobody wants to acknowledge it. You're sick, your mama was sick, all the way down the line, y'all had the same disease. And nobody's acknowledging that it was because of a certain issue. We don't want to address it. You want to say, you know, I found the best doctor. I found, you know, the holistic doctor and they're going to help me with X, Y, Z. They're not. And I can say that from, I, you guys know, I, I practice massage. Uh, you can't, you, can you imagine the amount of foolishness that I hear? The amount of holistic foolishness that I hear while the Lord is speaking of the exact issue that is at hand. You're talking about some holistic doctor. You talking about some stretches. You talking about some yoga poses. You are invoking the wrath of God. But let's let's stay here on on course. I actually feel like I read this to you guys before when I spoke about Starbucks. And speaking of Starbucks, you guys are going to keep on with the Starbucks. You won't. You will be surprised how many people have. Let me take this watch off because this watch is going to try to be distracting to me. Um, how many people have, I have said something about the Starbucks video and you come in the comments saying something about, you know, it's just the logo you keep on. You're, you're a part of the people who will be destroyed because you lack knowledge. It's not just the logo. The logo is simply the signature. We're talking about the mark of the beast. It's, it's not just, it's not just the signature. It's signifying something. 
So you want to believe it in one area and you don't want to believe it in another area. And you are of the people who will be destroyed because you lack knowledge. Don't come in my comment section. Don't come in my comment section telling me it's just a logo. Keep it to yourself. Keep it just a logo to yourself. While you and the next generation and the next generation of your family, of your bloodline, continue in the same foolishness. You continue to say that, but keep that out of my comment section. Be stupid alone. Be foolish in your conversation alone. But for those of you who dare have an ear to hear, who know, who you know, you know that you've been trying this, that, and the other, and you know that it's not getting you anywhere. Listen to me today. Listen to me today. So, like I said, that was Hosea chapter four, and I was prompted to read that, but I have read this for you guys before. As I was reading it, I realized that I want to go with you. Um, this was, ooh, it looks like October of 2023, October of 2023, the Lord gave to me um, a dream. And when I woke up from this dream, I hope that this is the date that it, I hope that this is the date, but. If it's not the date, that's the date that is above it. Because I actually remember him saying something about that a bit more recent. But anyway, let's say the date is not important. The Lord gave to me a dream. And when I woke up from the dream, it was a dream of like a family scenario. So I'm not going to share it with you. He said Delaware. And I knew that the way that he said Delaware to me, the way that he whispered Delaware to my spirit as I woke up that morning, that this was very significant. And I, it would be in my best interest to seek the Lord and find out exactly why he was saying this to me. So as I went through the day fasting and praying, like I said, because this is how you come to, you know, very hard hard facts, hard conclusions. None of this stuff that I'm sharing with you today is things that I studied. It's things that I have lived. This is what we just read in Hosea, correct? Correct. So he said to me, Delaware, I went throughout the day. I sat, you know, sat back with the Lord and I learned a few things. We're going to go through them first that Delaware was one of the first of 13 states to adhere to the Constitution. And as I did that research and I got Constitution, the Holy Spirit prompted me. He said, tends me to look up Constitution. And when I looked up Constitution, I got the basic principles, principles and laws of a nation state or a social group that determine the powers and duties of government and guarantee certain rights to the people. And the Lord was showing me that this in this way, Tanzania, you need to begin to think about my kingdom. I didn't quite get it all then. Okay, girl, they're going to keep on with these text messages and they trying to interrupt me. I didn't quite get it then. So I went on and this was all prompted by the Holy Spirit, because like I said, it's not how do you go from Delaware to what we're about to sit here and talk about? Only by the leading of the Holy Spirit was I able to come to these conclusions. I'm not no social studies major, baby. I don't watch TV. I don't do I don't do that stuff. So here we are. This is what I got. Like I said, he told me this is the way you need to begin to think about the kingdom. And he gave to me three things. He gave to me legislative, executive and judicial were the three um, parts of the Constitution. And like I said, I'm communicating with God as he's revealing these things to me, as he's telling me to do research of these things. And the first one I got was legislative. And that is the power to make laws. And I want you to know, as I read through these things, that these things exist in the kingdom. You need to learn them, the power to make laws. And he also told me when I was doing this um, research that this is the power that those who believe in me have been given. My God, Ooh, my God, my God, that these are that this is the access that you have when you are truly in me, that you have the that you have the authority Remember on earth as it is in heaven that you were given the keys to the kingdom and that the gates of hell themselves would not prevail against you. What do you think that means? That means that you've given you've been given power. So again, I say the power to make laws and then we have executive having the power to put plans, actions and laws into effect. Oh, Holy Spirit. Thank you. So God has given us the authority to put plans, actions, and laws into effect. And what are the, see, you actually, you're going to have to get to know him. So you know what his, what is already being done up here so that you're bringing what's already been done in heaven down here to earth. You're pulling it down here, but you've got to get some understanding. Not what you want, not manifesting stuff. That's not what we're doing here. 
We're simply understanding God's laws and pulling down and forbidding things that he said are forbidden here on earth. And loosing things that he says he wants here on the earth. That's what we're doing. That's what the kingdom is. That's what we're doing. Come on. Come on. I'm, I'm getting excited. And judicial was the last one. And judicial means relating to judgment and the administration of justice. Relating to judgment and the administration of justice. I hope that you hear me. I hope that you can hear me real good. This, this, these three things, these three things, my apologies, is telling me that as a believer, I have power. I'm not merely sitting around, you know, waiting for the right pastor, just folding my hands saying, Oh Lord, whenever you decide to do it. And yes, there, this knowledge did not come to me until the Lord was ready to give it to me for specific reasons. But if you just sit around doing nothing, what do you think you will get? What do you think you're going to gain? You're not going to gain anything. Girl, except a hard time and a hard life. And a hard life for your children. Ask your mama and your great grandma. They had a hard time. And some of them are just simply not honest. Some of them still living and still having a hard time. Because, they have, because they've been destroyed. They're being destroyed because they lack knowledge. And then the younger generation, some of us, who the Lord has given the knowledge to, you think you're too old to receive it. Well, it will be you. And the last thing he gave me was, no, they were, this is not the last thing. The next thing he gave me was a king. And he said that the king maintains the peace of a realm and oversees the administration of justice and upholds the rules of the law of the land. Now, you know that we have been made to be kings here. We have been made to have dominion here so these things these things have been given to you once you understand the other things you understand that there is that you have been made to maintain peace of a realm to oversee administration of justice and to uphold the law of the land well how can you uphold something that you don't know how can you uphold something that you yourself refuse to follow See, this is how the kingdom of God is separate from the actual justice system that that exists. But you see even how these people are being brought down to justice. What do you think about you? So how are you going to rule in the law that you don't understand or that you simply won't listen to? It's not going to happen. And this is the last thing that I have, and it is in a decree. So we can make decrees and a decree is an official order issued by a legal authority. Well, I've read all this for you. I hope that you've gained an understanding that God has made you to have legal authority here on this earth. That means some of the things that you're dealing with, you're dealing with them because you are not exercising your legal authority. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I'm going to bring you into this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And it's very reluctant to share this, but this is, this is, we got to have these kind of conversations because some of you are still watching preachers hop across the stage, pour syrup on Bibles, jump on trampolines and do literally God knows what else. And you, you leave there every Sunday. Guess what? Still in the same bondage, still in the same bondage. You're praying witchcraft prayers. You're still in the same bondage. So I was going to keep this to myself and I decided, you know, the Lord gave me, it was like two weeks. I was having a series of dreams and I'm like, Lord, you know, just let me know exactly what it is that you want me to do. Let me know exactly how it is that I need to pray. This is the kind of conversation that I had every time I woke up from one of these dreams. And I'm not going to share with you the dreams in total, but I am going to share this one with you. Because this night in particular, I told my husband, you know, um, I have mentioned for, to you guys before, and I'm not proud of this whatsoever. My family is from Louisiana. And the Lord began to highlight to me very specific things that um, we were introduced to that just the family just made seem like it was normal. Not just my family, but other families around me as well. Just made it seem like it was normal. And
was normal. And I began to realize by the unction of the Holy Spirit that these things just simply aren't normal. These things were ritualistic practices and these things were full blown witchcraft. And I didn't really understand where they were coming from. So I told my husband, you know, I was, I cried out and I'm like, I don't, I don't want anything to do with it. So I renounced and denounced out loud. Girl, that night I went to bed. And the Lord showed me in a dream, and this is going to be a word to those of you who have joined um, fraternities and sororities, which I have not, but I know a lot of people in my family who have. And the Lord showed me something that was very troubling, deeply troubling to my spirit that night in the dream. I saw, and I'm not going to say the person's name, I saw a young man and I saw like something like a shower and the, the boys were running around this shower. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The boys were running around this shower terrified and I could feel the terror that they felt as I sat watching as a bystander now I want you to know that I'm watching this from sort of like a lens like it's not like I'm actually there I'm actually getting to experience it by watching and I could feel the horror and the horror that I felt was as though these boys were locked into a room they had been lured there they knew that they were going to be a part of some kind of like club or something they had been lured there and they were deeply distressed once they got there they were blindfolded and I remember them being blindfolded and blood just being all over all of them and they didn't know they could feel blood splattering, but they didn't know where the blood had come from. And the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me as I see the blood, as I see, oh, they got shit, candidate. As I see um the people inside frantic, he begins to reveal to me where this blood is coming from. This blood, it's please excuse me. This blood was coming from things like um anal penetration. They were doing the most inhumane things to these young men. And the young men, when they were beginning to leave, thank you, Holy Spirit, when the young men were beginning to leave they were so terrified that if they ever said anything about what happened to them there they would have worse punishments oh thank you holy spirit and i remember going in by the unction of the holy spirit and rescuing oh thank you jesus one of my own family members and laying him down in my arms and it was just the the level of horror and terror that this young man was experiencing was i i woke up sad I woke up feeling the weight of this. And can I tell you something else? I woke up sick. I woke up with the very consequences that that this young man would have had on his life for breaking this oath that he made in this specific sorority. And that from that place, the Lord began to reveal things to me. So I want to say, like I said, that is a message for some of you who, ha who have been in fraternities and sororities. Freemasonry is the one that is at the top of my list because the Lord has been speaking to me about it. So don't be surprised if in the next coming weeks you see more things about it. If you know for a fact that your family has been a part of this debauchery, you need to begin to clean up and clean it up quickly because time is, is running out. Um... I unintentionally went to even a, a ritual ceremony at a funeral and did not know it. These things have been so integrated into our society. My high school, you know, I graduated in Louisiana. My high school, I did my senior year there. They made us wear white wedding dresses. But what I didn't know and would no one realize why we are being destroyed because we lack knowledge. Was that that hall was a Shriners Hall. That they had young girls dressed up in. Everybody had to wear white. And you know what white is symbolic of. Don't play with me sitting here. They knew exactly what they were doing. Whoever initiated this to be the practice of the land. Of the place. They knew exactly what they are doing. We just didn't know. But just because we didn't know. Does that relieve us of the consequences? Absolutely not. My people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. And when someone tries to give you knowledge. You don't want to listen. You want to listen. I mean, if you, if I dare, I will give you, I will link below. You know what I always say? Give me about four or five days. Okay. And I'll have a resource for you. You'll be able to access all the stuff for free on the website. I'll try to link it down below. If it's not linked down below, it's because I can't figure out how to do it. Go to my website and there you will find a resource. Like I said, give me about four or five days. Of some things that I recommend that you read if you know for a fact that your family has been involved in Freemasonry specifically. 
But like I said, what I saw in that dream, what I experienced in that dream, the horror that I experienced in that dream. And let me tell you that I was, I went to bed then after I cried out to the Lord and I talked with my husband because I had just kept all this stuff to myself. After I cried out, I was, I was actually a bit upset. I was a bit upset. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that someone would dare get their family entangled in this level, in this level. That they're dead and gone and still everybody in the family is suffering. I mean cancers. I mean skin conditions. I mean mental health conditions. The family is completely destroyed. I thought to myself, I said it out loud. How dare they do this to us? And this is the dream that the Lord gave me. And I believe that he gave it to me. Because I was able to have compassion because let me tell you once the young men the young men who got initiated into this They did not know that these things were going to happen to them once they got there. They were all terrified Every last one of them and none of them escaped They realized that they couldn't that they would be in trouble They they knew the oaths that they took and they were terrified to turn back but I just read for you at the beginning here that we have now knowing the information that we know, you really are going to need to step forth. You're going to need to step into the courts of heaven and get some of these verdicts overturned. And that's the only way that you're going to get freedom. You can drop that medication. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You can drop that medication. OK, you can stop going to the doctor for it. You can stop. You can just stop. Because unless this verdict is overturned, it will continue. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I, I'm so tempted to tell you what happened to me. No, I'm going to tell. Why, why would I be afraid? When I woke up from that dream, my neck, my neck, my tongue, the whole thing, it felt as though, you know what people get into like a car accident and they have on the neck brace? It felt as though I needed a neck brace on. It was like, how did this even happen? How did, how, how did this, I, I haven't even done anything for this to happen. How has this happened? And I began to try to reason, well, maybe it was the workout that I was doing. Well, maybe it was this and maybe it was that. And I'm telling you, had the Lord not showed me this, had the Lord not brought this to my attention, I wouldn't have gotten it. I would not have gotten it. I would have been just like most of you. I would have been going to doctors and I did. I went to the emergency room. And ask them like, hey, what's, what's good? What's going on? And nothing. You know why? Because there are some things that no one will be able to figure out. Because it's simply a verdict needs to be overturned. And replaced with a just verdict. With a just verdict. But can I tell you that you cannot get a just verdict if you are not in right standing with God. Repentance needs to be in place. Repentance needs to be in place. So taking medications that never that will never ever ever solve your problems. And let's say they do solve your problems. Let's say you go through this life numb. You think you'll solve your children's problems? You think the generation coming up behind you that it'll solve their problems because you went through life numb? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It, it won't. So this is my message to you this morning, and that is wake up, oh sleeping church. Wake up. Wake up, stop your church attendance. And I'm not telling you don't go to church at all, but stop your, you're keeping a track on your church attendance. And really the only reason you go to church is so that everybody can see the outfit that you have on and see your tail. That's why you're going. You're going because you think at one of these times, the pastor going to call you up there and prophesy directly to you. And the Lord's been starting, trying to speak to you for years. You're making a mockery and a mess of your life. And the Lord's been trying to speak to you for years. But it is the time. The time is now to get things together. To stop being destroyed because we lack knowledge. And we lack the desire even to want to understand more. And if that's you, if you if you if you like mocking videos like this and you just don't understand, just the best thing that you can do. I promise you the best thing you can do is just keep your mouth closed is just shut up. When you don't understand, the best thing that you can do is just close your mouth when we're speaking of matters like this. That's the best thing you can do. Lest you get yourself into further mess than what you already are in. The best thing you can do is shut up. As always.
if you have a question ask a question i don't know if we'll have the comments here like i told you if you're looking for that resource give me a few days it'll be down below um my only desire is that we grow that we grow as the body of christ that the true body of christ that those who are really believers of christ and you really want to do this thing right i want you to know that this is the hour for you to take a stand I want you to know that this is the hour for you to learn. I want you to know that this is the hour for you to take back that which belongs to you and your family. That's what I want you to know. That's all. So I'll see you guys in the next video.